Good afternoon and welcome to SA Super League, another show, second week. I'm your host TJ Saunders, I'm joined here with Bowls SA representative Matthew Northcott and Matley Pirates representative Josh Thompson, fresh back from New Zealand. Um, so guys, welcome aboard. Thanks TJ, good to be here. Thanks mate. No problem Josh. So today's show, we'll, uh, we'll see the results from round one, cracking, absolutely cracking launch. Um, we'll announce the team selections for next Sunday. Remember, next Sunday is rounds two and three, so a little bit to get through. Um, we'll declare our tips for the week. Matt and I will get stuck into that. We'll put uh, Josh into the torch, a few questions, and uh, see how he sweats. Then, of course, uh, get some questions from, uh, from you, the audience. And um, look, so uh, send some questions through for Josh or myself or Matt. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. So, Super League uh, began last Friday night, absolutely brilliant crowd. Um, you know, we got told it was a healthy crowd. I would suggest that um, when we did an interview with Simon Dorr, Simon suggested there wasn't a car space to find in the car park. Big car park at Salisbury as well, isn't it, mate? Absolutely, mate. <laughs> so, and when, when we were leaving there at the end of it, uh, we could see the cars parked up in the garden beds and so forth. So, fantastic. So, thanks very much for coming along and, uh, and supporting the launch of the Super League. As I said, we kick off uh, early... Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, if that's early for you, uh, <laughs> I'm not too sure. So, um, look, looking at the results, first off, we'll, uh, we'll head to the first game that we viewed was uh, Central Chargers, defeated Eastern Raiders 66-43. to Yep, uh, Central Chargers too strong there, claiming the win on two of the ranks, the singles and the pairs, so uh, big results in those, Craig Mills playing the singles for the Chargers, and Steve Dennis and Wayne Rudiger in the pairs. I don't know if you caught much of that TJ live stream in the triples, but I would not have wanted to run into any of those com combinations on the evening. They were uh, very, very strong. Well, yeah, you're dead right, Matthew. Look, uh, Craig Mills, 25 to 13 over Mitch, and you know, Mitch, good performance. Yeah, Craig, <clears throat> when you can hear Craig Mills from no matter where he is, and you know he's on fire, and look, yeah, I did catch a little bit of his game, um, bowling superb. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, so I definitely wouldn't have been, wanted to have played them too. For the, for the Raiders, uh, they did get a consolation in the triples. Dwayne Edwards, Chris Flavel and Carl Sharple in the, the game that you and Straight. Stewie covered in the live stream. They played very yeah. well. And yeah, look, I can tell you now, and I did mention quite a few times with, um, with Stuart Forbes, the fellow commentator there, that um, Renata Callista really took it to Dwayne Edwards. You know, Dwayne was four, maybe resting toucher, but six inches away. He threw four ends in a row. And then uh, Dwayne's teammate, Chris Flavel, playing at two, was getting on the mat one or two down. Yep. It was a really good hit out, and because obviously consolidated by Mark Haynes and Carl Schrapel as the skips, but the damage was definitely done by uh, Renata and Adrian Green uh, up against Dwayne and Chris. Yeah, so it was a great game overall, but the charge is just too strong yep. on the night. Um, they had a very strong lineup, so I think they were probably the favourite and, and got over the line accordingly. Absolutely. Um, so look, uh, the next game saw the South Eastern Spartans de uh, defeat Southern Blazers, fifty six to forty six. Uh, another uh, another colleague or friend and associate of mine, Jeff Munn, twenty one over Blake Phoebe, thirteen. Yeah, that was probably the game changing uh, rip, nearly. Um, yeah, with the Blazers also, oh, sorry. Jeff Munn was uh, unfortunately on the wrong end of the overall scoreboard, but he tried his best to, to bring it back for the Blazers. But um, a good win to the Spartans. Um, their pairs combination, Nathan Black and Tyson Wilson, um, doing a lot of the damage over Dylan Lewis and Ashley Wiley, 28-13. Um, I think I said that last week, that that pairs game would influence the overall match, and 15 shots probably says that. But mm. as you said, Jeff Munn played very well for the Blazers in, in putting up a fight to the Spartans. Yeah, absolutely. And looking at the triples, uh, Vicky Arvin, Scott Bins and Tony Devlin defeating Karen Gatto, Brenton Speed and Mark Evans. Um, you know, on the ride home with the people I had in the car, you know, what they could talk about was actually how well Vicky Arvin bowled. They reckon she led that off and put him in a great position to win. So, um, awesome effort, but awesome effort by, uh, by all players there. So, uh, <clears throat> at 8pm, we uh, obviously saw the Western Rogues defeat the Mallee Pirates, 66-44. to 44. Um, So, we got Sol, uh, Drew with uh, Simon Dorr. That was a fantastic match, wasn't it, mate? In singles, 15 all, and one of the first ever singles draws. Usually, you play 21 up or something like that, so... Yep. Playing ends, we can have a draw in singles, and that was probably a fitting result for that game, don't you reckon? Yeah, look, one of the things that I caught, and we actually asked Sol afterwards what actually happened, the scores were 16-14 coming to the last end. Um, 
the umpire or the marker got involved where Sol suggested there was an issue with the score. Funny enough, the score got um, adjusted back to 15-14. So in reality, that was all to do with a, a, someone misheard about a power play. Yep. And Sol was, showed an enormous amount of integrity and said, no, my score's not 16, it's actually 15. So t- he could have actually snuck away and win there, but nothing, yeah. nothing's ventured from something like that. So probably shows the, the integrity and, and shows the medal of uh, what makes that player. Good, good, honest, good honest country fella, good on your soul. <laughs> but uh, you played very well to, a, to get a 15 yep. old draw with Dory nonetheless. Yep. And the big result in that one, mate, the pairs, uh, which you live streamed as yep. well. Um, Ashley Coaston, Josh Studham, 28, Adam Forbes, Andrew Hill, 11. Yep. Um, they sort of just blew them out early and set up a match overall for the Rogues, didn't yep. they? Yeah, started up with a six in the first in and then look back. Uh, Sam Dietrich, Cole, Corey, Wildash and Max Kleine, 23, defeated Dave Carter, Jeff Davis and Gary Meekums, 18. Uh, unfortunately, didn't catch much from that game. Um, I so thought the last two ends, which were enough in itself, the Pirates actually picked up an eight on a super end to get within one on the last end, and I reckon they're holding match. But a big uh, Maxi Kleining drive saved it for the Rogues, so uh, it was uh, Rogues led all the way, probably deserved to win. The Pirates nearly stole it with that super end, but uh, Maxi came through in the clutch. Yep. So the final game is the uh, Heist and Comets defeating the Northern Knights 58 51. Ash Hall's 26 defeated Darren Warner 18. Yeah, there was nothing in that match overall um, from what I saw the whole time. Um, I did look at scorecards afterwards, which you probably don't have the luxury of, TJ, but Ashley actually won, I reckon, the last six ends. I reckon he was about 15, 18 down, and he uh, actually uh, won those last six or so ends to get a 26 to 18 win, and not only win his rank, but set up a win overall for the Comets. Yep, and looking through that, uh, the rest of the games, Ben Harris, James Gregory, 17, um, defeated Bernie Ward and Todd Brand, 15, so close game, just getting that one across the line. And Josh Choppin, Damon Edmonds and Darren Niblett, 15, were defeated by Yvonne Kelly, Luke Pittersma and Kane Calls, 18. Yeah, so I said nothing in that game the whole way and that singles matchup proved critical, so yep. that was a very even contest between those two teams. And Absolutely. Good game. So that's a good wrap up from uh, round one. So what we'll do is we'll move straight into the team selections for round two and three this Sunday. So the first game we're going to look at is the Heist and Comets versus South East and Spartans. So uh, we should have that on the screen. So Darren Niblett versus Blake Phoebe. Scott Thorburn, James Gregory up against Nathan Black and Tyson Wilson. So they're going in with the same combination again in the, uh, in the pairs. Winning form's good form. It is. Matthew Armitage, Ian Miller, Damon Edmonds uh, versus Alex Reynolds, Scott Binns and Tony Devlin. Uh, it's a big one for the pairs in this one uh, for me, TJ. Scotty Tholburn coming in to partner James Gregory, um, coming up against Nathan Black and Tyson Wilson, who obviously showed they gel well last week with a 15-shot win. Uh, that's a big game for me, and I think that will decide the match. What do you reckon how this one will go? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm sort of looking at the highs and comments on this one. I think that um, <clears throat> I reckon uh, probably a, a 2-1 on the rink. I don't think it's going to be a clean sweep, but I thought I'd have to go with the comments on that one. Yeah, I'm back in the comments overall as well. So the next game we're going to look at is the Southern Blazers versus the Northern Knights. Um, Jeff Munn up against Bernie Ward. Ben Fittick, Gav Pfeiffer up against Jack Trenord and Kane Calls. And in the triples, Teresa Emberton, Justin Parkinson, Mark Evans up against Karen Lynch, Brent Marshall and Matthew Shaw. So a number of players making their debut this week who uh, didn't get a game last Friday night, so it's good to see some fresh faces in those teams. Um, Singles is a big game for me here. Uh, Jeff Munn showed his good form last week playing the singles and his uh, form has been rewarded by retaining that spot up against Bernie Ward who had a crack in the pair, so um, that'll be a very good game. What are your thoughts on this one, mate? I tell you what, I'd like to to split that and toss a coin. (laughs) I, I actually think it's going to be decided in the singles. Yep. And uh, really a win from Jeff Munn last week. Bernie Ward's very handy in singles, so you know, but I'm gonna have to go the way of the uh, Blazers on this one, but only narrowly and I'll tell you what, it's a real toss of the coin. I've got the knights down on my paper, mate, so one of us will be correct this week. Alright then. <laughs> so we're going to, uh, looking at the uh, next game which is the Northern Knights versus the South Eden Spartans. We've got Darren Warner up against Daryl Stop. Yvonne Kelly and Todd Brand versus Jody Cott and Jack Pryor, or Jake, sorry, Pryor, and uh, Cooper Hocking making a, making a show with Matthew Short, Luke Pittersma versus Daniel Greenslade, Vicky Arben, and Ken Holton. 
Yeah, absolutely. So uh, singles is again pretty critical here. Uh, Battle of the country reps, Darren Warner, Port Augusta, Daryl Stop um, down from Keith. So it's good to see those players be given the, uh, the mantle of singles um, for, for this week. And that could be a very interesting game. I reckon that will almost decide the match. I've got the Spartans again ahead narrowly. What about you, mate? Yeah, I'd have to agree with you on that one. Uh, but it is very narrow. So uh, so next one we've got is the... Um, we missed one, didn't we? We did, I think. We did, we missed one. Southern Blazers, Heist and Comets. Um, that's Jeff Munn versus Ash Halls. Stephanie Clark, Gav Pfeiffer up against Grace Maloney and Cassandra Harvey. Harry Burgess, Justin Parkinson, Mark Evans up against Jackie Gardner, Josh Choppin and Scott Folburn. Yes, uh, good game the triples. This one for me, a couple of state reps squaring off, uh, skipping against each other. Mark Evans and... Scotty Thorburn with a couple of up-and-comers underneath them, Justin Parkson and Josh Chopman on each team respectively. Um, it's going to be a very good game. Um, good to see a lot of the junior girls or up-and-coming young female players represented in this game as well. Steph Clark, Grace Maloney. Does Cass still sneak in as young? I think so. She's uh, just in that age group. But uh, I've got the Comets in front. What about you, mate? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to agree with you on that one. Um, look, I think that you know that, that injection of the players coming in on... Look, on the paper, it's going to be interesting, but I reckon that they uh, they might get that across the line. I agree. And the last one uh, that we've got here on this page is Central Chargers versus Western Rogues. That's Craig Mills up against Josh Studham. Um, Steve Dennis, Wayne Rudiger up against uh, Marty Maloney and Ash Close. And Renata Clister, Ben Bowman, Mark Haynes up against Jackie Field, Corey Waldash and Sam Beatrich. I want you to take the lead on this one, mate. What, what sticks out there for you? Uh, central chart sticks out. You know, they're going with the same combination of the singles. Uh, Josh Dunham was, I would say, one step away from being on fire last week. He couldn't do much wrong in the Bears. Ash Close did get him off to a great start. But, you know, on his own, Josh is, can hold his own. But, you know, Craig Mills equally played really well last week. And then, of course, you go into the pairs with Steve Dennis and Wayne Rudiger. Um, yeah, with Marty up against Marty and Ash. I'm not taking anything away from Ash, but you know, these are really good combinations in through there. But if I have to pick, yep, I'm going for the uh, Chargers. Yeah, as you said, I think it's a massive matchup on the singles. Craig Mills, Josh Dunham were nearly both probably best on ground for their respective teams last week, from what I saw. So uh, the winner of that one could decide it. The Chargers have gone very strong again here, um, keeping a lot of the same players in. So I'm backing them as well, mate. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Mally Pirates versus Eastern Raiders. So uh, that's going to see the uh, introduction of the, the Thompson guys. Mm-hmm. And we've got Gary Thompson leading against uh, in the singles off against Mitch Percy. Bailey Rafferty and Josh Thompson up against Jackson Saunders and Tony Lucas. So uh, I reckon that's out of there. Uh, there's out of six players, there's five making their uh, debut there yep. against uh, Lu- Lucy Tiller, Matt Fairburn, Andrew Hill up against Michael Lodge, Chris Flavel and Carl Schroebel. Yeah, triples looks really interesting in this one for me. Um, under 18 guns, uh, Lucy Tiller and Matthew Freeband coming in uh, with the, the custodian Andrew Hill to skip them. Yep. So it'll be good to see how they gel uh, against that successful triples combination for the Raiders last week. Yep. Chris Flavel and Carl Sharp will stay in there. They've brought Michael Lodge in as well, so very strong. Um, Good to have the Tomo boys uh, involved for this one, back from New Zealand, so uh, good to have them back, but unfortunately I'm not going to give them the win. I'm going for the Raiders. How about you? Yeah, I don't want to be controversial this week. Uh, the tyres cost a lot on the car, so <laughs> I'm uh, going to go for the Raiders. As I said, they've got uh, they've got some depth there. Um, I'm the Eastern Raiders, and I reckon it's going to be uh, at least yeah, 2-1. We'll, we'll find out. We Should will. Be a good match. Then we go into the Western Rogues versus Eastern Raiders. Um, we've got Soul up against Tony Trelaw, so Tony from uh, Lowethal. Brady Slater making his debut, Jaden Zeller versus Mitch Percy and Carl Schraple. Uh, Kate Argent Bowden, Di Merch, and Max Kleinig up against Laney McGorman, Michael Lodge, and Chris Flavel. Yeah, uh, well, this very interesting matchup, this one. I'm not sure. This could be a, a tie, nearly. I can't pick this one, it's pretty close. Uh, Bit of talent spread throughout. The Raiders look to have a very strong pairs combination with Mitch and Carl. Yep. Um, you know, the, the Rogues have gone for a bit of bit more youth and variation there. Uh, Max Kleinig, probably their, their kingpin to try and bring them home along with Sol from last week. But I'm going to go the Rogues uh, narrowly against the Raiders myself. 
Look, I, yet again, it's a race edge, but I think the Western Rogues accounted for themselves really well last week, and I'm going to have to pick them across the line. So the last game, it's a big, uh, big card when it's a double header. Absolutely. Central Chargers versus the Mallee Pirates. So we've got uh, Craig Mills cementing himself into that singles position quite well up against Andrew Hill, against Steve Dennis, Wayne Rudiger, against Matthew Fairburn and Jeff Davis. Renata Callista, Ben Bowman, Mark Haynes um, up against Bailey Rafferty, Kath Greenslade and Gary Meekums. Yes, so we've spoke a bit about uh, Craig Mills and how tough he is to beat in singles. I'm going to mention the pairs in this one. Steve Dennis and Wayne Rudiger, Wayne Rudiger sorry. Um, they've been given the mantle in the pairs three times now. Um, mm-hmm. A very strong uh, combination, uh, nearly unbeatable uh, if they play well. Um, it's interesting to see that the Chargers are going out very strong early with their selections. Um, so I'm, I'm going to back them while they're sort of playing a lot of their, their marquee players and high draft picks. Um, it'll be interesting to see how their depth gets tested um, later on once they start manoeuvring these positions around it. Yep. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I'd have to agree. I'm not going to go past the charge this way. It's not taking anything away from the Mallee Pirates, but you know, when they're going in and, and having watched the triples, and we streamed that last week, you know, we know what their singles and their pairs can do and not taking anything away from Andrew Hill and Jeff Davis there um, and Matt F- uh, Freeburn, but the fact of the matter is that those guys are absolutely strong up front. Yes. Absolutely. So charges across the line for me. So plenty of games. Uh, great matches from 10am on Sunday kicking off. Um, look, whether it's cold, whatever, we are on the roof. There was last week there was music, there was hot food, there was come and try bowls. Face painting, I did miss that because we were commentating, very disappointed. Um, but please come along. The yeah, Salisbury Bombs have really gone above and beyond to make it a, a real spectator experience as well, despite the weather. So I'm um, sure it'll be a good fun again on Sunday, and we encourage everyone to come along. Yeah. Time to move on to our next segment, mate. Uh, Ross Smile from you, I reckon it's your favourite one TJ's <laughs> Torch. Time to uh, get young Josh Thompson involved and put him under the microscope a bit. So, a reminder from everyone watching at home, send through a question that uh, if you've got one for Josh or TJ or myself, send them through and we'll try and ask the best one by the end of this segment. But I'll leave it for you, TJ, to put Joshy under the torch. Thanks very much, Matt. So, Josh, thanks for joining us here today. That's all right. Thanks for having me. <coughs> Mate, we were talking uh, earlier when you, uh, when you came to the office about what is... Well, what is it that's making it so exciting to play in this league for you? Oh, it's, it's new and it's, you know, it's just, it's a very exciting thing for me just to be picked, you know, and, uh, I'm, what's the word? Um, I'm, it's just, it's a good thing, it's good, great for South Australia, you know, um, we need our bowls here needs to needs to change I think and it's actually starting to come up. Yep. Which I'm quite happy about. So you were saying off off camera you you've probably chosen a little bit of a different path in the last couple of seasons with Prospect Broadview to Adelaide I think going back to Prospect Broadview but you did mention the one good thing about this league is someone else that's in your team that you get to play with. Yeah, I get to play with my dad again. I'm actually really excited about that. Yep. Uh, we it's been I reckon over five years since we've been able to play together, TJ. Yep. You know, we argue a lot, but, you know, we enjoy it. Ah, well, <laughs> we, we do well out of it. It's, uh, it's your dad, mate, you're allowed yeah. to argue with your dad, aren't you? Yeah, and he's my boss as well. So. Well, <laughs> just as long as you're wrong every time. Yes, always <laughs> wrong. So, look, there's a, we've read out the teams tonight. There's, there's across the board, and I said it last week in the commentary, every single bowler out there, in one way, shape or form, has earned the right to be there. You know, they've all accredited and they've won championships to club championships to represent at the state. Out of all of the people out there, who are you most looking forward to playing either with or against? I'm actually looking forward to playing against uh, young Joshy Studham and uh, Max Kleinix. Yep. You know, they're great bowlers, they've done well. Yep. And I like to challenge myself. Yep. So I'm looking forward to giving them a run for their money. So you know, there's, you've missed the first round, you're back coming in straight into the second round, which is great. Uh, to come straight in, but what are you hoping to achieve? So at the end of the, third, the seven rounds, mm-hmm. is there some boxes that you want to tick? Um, there's always a box you want to tick, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, I just want to get a couple wins under my name, show people that I'm still a good bowler. Yep. So, yeah. Well, if anyone's seen you train, I think I've seen you train out there a few times. Yes. <laughs> um, mate, you're, uh, you're going to do pretty well. Yeah, look, I guess that... Um, 
when the side comes together and the draft, what do you, how do you pick your side? How do you, how do you rate the Mallee Pirates? I reckon we've got a fairly strong side um, with uh, the young under-18s. I reckon um, young Matthew is going to be a great bowler for our side. Yep. Um, young um, Grace. Yep, Grace Maloney. Grace Maloney. I, call, I was calling her Lucy last oh, time. Oh, it is Lucy. Lucy, 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 yeah. Oh, Lucy, yeah. I got wrong again. She's a good little left-hander. You don't see a lot of left-handers in the game, to be honest. Yep. Um, yeah, we've, I reckon we've got a strong side. And, you know, the first round may have not approved it as much, but coming into this second round, I reckon we're actually going to do quite well. Yeah, I think what you'll find is from last week, there was... Um, we interviewed Simon Dore, who played in the singles against yeah. Sol in that draw, and Simon Dore mentioned that for the first time in a long time, when he's pulling up the car hut, he was actually nervous. And so, mm. people are nervous because they're excited. Yes. Yeah. And it's not because they're nervous because of failure. In, in someone that's accredited, like I said, like Simon, mm. that's actually excitement. Mm. That he wants to get out there, he's nervous, he wants to perform well. So it actually means something to him. Especially something that's brand new like this. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier, you know, something a bit of a difference. So, you know, looking, f- looking into the future and obviously not holding you accountable to any way, shape or form, mm. do you think the format that we're heading into is something that you would flow into a Saturday? No, to be honest, I don't think... Um, I reckon we should change up um, maybe the amount of time we play mm-hmm. in the games we play yep. in the season. Yep. But I definitely think we should change it up to maybe, you know, the fours, triples, pairs format. Sim- similar to the Wednesday. Yes, similar to yep. the Wednesday. Okay, well, Josh, best of luck this week. Thank you. I will be uh, watching you intently as I always do. Yes. Um, but uh, no, best of luck to uh, to Josh and the rest of the Mallee Pirates. Um, look, it's only one week. I wouldn't read too much into what you said last week. I think that everyone encountered themselves well. Mm. Uh, it was an absolutely awesome night. So mm. yeah, thanks very much. All right, so that's uh, that's about it for this week's show. I'll probably go through you something else. I'll so. jump in with the, the viewer question. Oh, we got a viewer question. Uh, we don't, but I'm going to throw one in on my own. Um, yep. Just going to put your dad under the bus here. He's got a very good resume, nearly 100 state games, yes. multiple state titles. Do you try and aim to beat him one day, or is there some sort of rivalry there that you think you can outdo him by the time your bowls career reaches that age? I or? aim to beat him in a game of singles, to be honest. I've never beaten my dad in a game of singles, but... I've always wanted to win a state singles title to make my father proud. Excellent. Good work, mate. I just want to jump in as well, TJ. We should uh, mention the great work of all our coaches. Um, Putting all these team selections together each week is a a mammoth job, so um, we haven't given them a a kudos in the the team wraps, but um, they thoroughly deserve it. So uh, Deanna Amos, Mike Wildash, Jeff Brand, Johnny Morris, Scott Hocking, Steve Grant... Linton Modra and Roy Palmer. Uh, they're coaching their respective teams, doing a fantastic job of it as well. So it'd be uh, rude of us not to mention them and their hard work behind the scenes in getting these teams out there each week. So well done to those guys. Absolutely well said, Matthew, well done. So all right, as I was saying before, that's about it for this week's show. Um, get out to the uh, Salisbury Bowling Club. It's 10 a.m. on Sunday. So 10, 12, two and four for the respective games. Look, you will find those games um, on the Bowls SA website for who and what and where they're playing. Um, but to give you an idea, um, for those that the 10 a.m. game will be the Heisen Comets uh, versus South East and Spartans, and we will be viewing Scott Falburn and James Gregory up against Nathan Black and Tyson Wilson. For the uh, 12 o'clock game, it will be Southern, uh, Southern Blazers, Heisen Comets, Stephanie Clark and Gavin Pfeiffer um, versus Grace Maloney and Cassandra Harvey front and centre. 2 p.m. Central Chargers, Western Rogues. It will be uh, Mills versus, that's Craig Mills versus Josh Studham. And I'm sure I'm gonna get a phone call straight after this that he's gonna be on TV. Uh, he seems to perform and I think both of them do well. And of course the last game, Rogues, uh, Raiders, Kate Argent Bowden, Di Merch, Max Kleinig versus Laney McGilman, Michael Lodge, Chris Flam with the triples. Um, I will point out just before we, uh, we close off, I, we do get a lot of commentary coming through when we're commentating about other rinks. Uh, just let you know, it's sometimes not easy, depending on the position of the players, when we're in the commentary. We will do our very, very best to keep you updated, but please work with us as we, I think, get accustomed to where we are. We can show you the rink that we're, the, sorry, the rink that we're playing. We can see that game's boards quite easily, but the far, um, the far green is nearly out of eyesight, particularly for people as myself, they're getting older and wear glasses. Um, particularly of a night time.
But uh, look, come along. As I said before, hot food, cold drinks, lots of atmosphere there. That uh, come and try bowls. Let's hope that uh, they turn on the weather like they did last Friday. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining, Matthew. Josh, thanks for coming along. Thanks, man. And um, yeah, from all of us here, see you next uh, next week, same time. Thanks, TJ.